The advanced manufacturing and engineering sector today uh, is facing a whole raft of different challenges and changes. It's changing rapidly, uh, both in terms of business as we uh, transition uh, through Brexit and so on, but also we are facing and are in the middle of an industrial revolution that is, is characterised by digitisation and that the opportunities that that present to operate in, in many, many different ways and to increase the levels of productivity. That's the biggest challenge for industry right now, is to address productivity. One of the key challenges that the sector has had for a long time has been uh, attracting enough people into advanced manufacturing and engineering. We're still dogged by old, out-of-date impressions of what the industry is all about. Uh, we still can't get young people to see it as an exciting and vibrant place to work. We have to address that, and we have to address that in a concerted way, rather than lots of different activities, which is what's been happening in the past. There is a real need for people to work together and focus on how we inspire young people to see this as a great place to work. And we also have to address the issue of the people who already work in the sector um, feeling confident about what change means for them and how they can still be part of the fourth industrial revolution through learning new skills and the way in which we can adapt and improve their role within work and make it more interesting through the use of automation and, and digital technologies. I think to a, a, a very great extent, large employers uh, continue to be able to attract the talent that they need. Uh, but they also tell us that uh, people that come out of university may not necessarily be industry ready. Uh, so there are challenges for everyone. Uh, large employers, I think, are, are by and large oversubscribed when it comes to apprentices. Uh, applications to become apprentices with them, but uh, they also have concerns about their supply chain. I think some of the shifts that have taken place in terms of government wanting to work more with industry to develop qualifications and competencies has put a large onus on those large employers. And of course, we would have to, I think, recognise that uh, the apprenticeship levy has been a big issue for large employers. They are the ones who pay it. Uh, and they, I think, are, are quite frustrated that some of the flexibilities that they would like to see around how they can use that have been a long time coming. In essence, everyone thinks the levy is a good idea, uh, but it has not necessarily been implemented in quite the right way to make best use of that money that has been invested and should be used to develop the talent for the future. I think the biggest challenge for small and medium-sized companies is around attracting talent in the first place. So it's almost inevitable that young people, when they come to look for places to work, will look at the big names first. And they won't know about lots of the small companies that exist out there who, when all is said and done, are, are part of those same supply chains. Uh, and so I think for, for small companies, the biggest challenge is attracting young people and getting them to notice that there are some really interesting jobs to be done in some of those smaller, smaller companies and still being part of leading ed to edge technologies. It isn't all necessarily done in, in the large companies. We're living in fairly uncertain times for everyone right now. Uh, politically and in many other ways I think it's hard for everyone to predict what the future is going to look like uh, whether that's because of Brexit whether it's because of other other even bigger pol geopolitical issues the future is is difficult to predict what I think we all know large and small companies and those of us who are here to support the industry what we do know is that things are changing they're changing fast and the only way that we can all keep pace with that is to adapt and change as quickly as we can. And for me, that means all of us working together and for organisations like ours 
to try and find ways in which we can offer practical help to large and small companies to take them on that journey. I think there have been a lot of initiatives over many, many years within the sector. Uh, there's probably been too many initiatives, actually. So uh, everyone doing what they think is the right thing to try and develop and attract more people into industry. I think one of the things we learned last year as part of a uh, year of engineering was that it was much, much better if we work together, if we cut collaborate and cooperate with one another to, to join up some of those initiatives and give one coherent message to schools, to young people and to their parents around what's on offer and what's available. So I think when you read reports like the Perkins Review and the update that was done uh, earlier this year, what it shows us is that we are making progress but it's too slow. We're not keeping up with the size of the skills gap that exists. So we really do need to carry on that collaborative working to try and address that issue. I think Made Smarter is a really important initiative, not least because it's cross-cutting. Um, we have within the industrial strategy a number of sector deals already. Each of those sector deals has a skills element within it. But when you look at Made Smarter, Made Smarter is unique in the sense that it recognises this digital revolution that is going to affect every sector and is going to require common skills, whichever of those industry sectors you're working, whether it's rail, whether it's oil and gas, whether it's electrical, even agricultural industry, everyone is going to see the impact of uh, digital technologies and so for me there is a real common thread that, that Made Smarter addresses in all of that which says actually we shouldn't be working on these skills issues at sectoral level because when you look at them in detail they're actually the same across all of those sectors. This is all about remaining competitive on the world scale. Um, whether or not we do the fourth industrial revolution and embrace digital technologies in the UK will determine whether we continue to play on that world stage. Make no mistake about it, other countries in the world are already doing this. They're already, in some cases, a lot further forward than we are. So it's really important that we embrace this because we have the talent. Uh, we have always been a country and a nation that uh, excels at engineering and innovation. We deserve to be there and we should be there and part of this massive revolution in, in digital that's taking place around the world. But we'll only do that if we address this skills need and get people to see how important engineering and manufacturing skills are for everyone. CEMTA has a wealth of experience. Uh, we've been around for a long time. We have a good reputation with many people. Uh, for what we do and what we've delivered, uh, but we're not well known enough. And we also, I think, have some baggage associated with being an old sector skills council that we need to recognise and make conscious efforts to move away from. Um, but that massive experience base that we have is an incredibly good opportunity for us to move forward supporting industry, doing the right things and providing some really practical solutions to some of the challenges that large and small companies face to help them address this journey that they're on and which we can be so supportive to them. I think the key role for CEMTA is to act as that solution provider, practical solution provider whether that's in developing the new T-levels, whether it's becoming uh, outstanding at endpoint assessment, whether it's providing that placement service that enables people who apply for apprentices to large companies to be then placed with the smaller companies if they're unsuccessful with the larger companies. All of those things are examples of really practical things that we can do that take the burden away from industry and provide them with solutions that enable them to make 
more progress more quickly in these areas of, of moving forward in digital and manufacturing skills. I think the challenges are opportunities. Um, one of them is about using that legacy of the past to be the base from which we develop and move to a very new and a very different place, probably even changing our name and rebranding ourselves. But that's a great opportunity to build on that, on that legacy of the past and turn ourselves into something new that people will recognise for being that up-to-date supporter of the industry. Um, I think the challenges are uh, working with others, developing those partnerships, because we must do that. We must, we must model that behaviour of partnership working, which is so important in a landscape that is currently very fragmented. Um, and I think the challenge also, but again it's an opportunity, is to build on that experience not just of the organisation, because at the end of the day the organisation is about the people who are part of it. And I know that we have some very talented and very um, committed people working for SEMTA and for EAL, and we need them to be part of this journey with us to this exciting new place. I think it needs to be, the industry is looking for someone to help provide solutions. The challenges that face anyone in manufacturing industry are many and varied, as I've said. The challenges of dealing with Brexit and dealing with many other things that are going on in terms of, of the change to supply chains and so on. Anyone who can offer practical solutions that avoid them having to divert people and, and activity to other areas will be welcomed. And I'm sure if we can demonstrate that we can be part of that practical solution side of the equation, we will be very much welcomed and supported by industry.